Hello and welcome to a short video where I'm going to run through the process for doing a modal time history analysis on a, a vibrating beam. So this exercise here you may be familiar with, it's something we've previously looked at, we've done previously done a frequency analysis on this part. It's to represent a, a steel ruler which is fastened to the edge of a desk or similar. Um, and we have previously carried out a frequency analysis where we looked at the natural frequencies and bending modes. The first bending mode of vibration happens at about 13 hertz, second mode at about 83 hertz, third mode, uh, third bending mode uh, 231 hertz, and then this one is a torsional mode of vibration at about 257 hertz, and we have transverse vibration it's kind of first bending mode, the transverse direction is about 325 hertz, roughly. Okay, so we've previously done that frequency analysis. What I'm going to do today is a different type of analysis, a modal time history. So looking, plotting over time, the response of the system in response to a uh, initially applied force, and then looking at the free vibration response of the system over time. Okay, so we could run that analysis and we could look at, say, the response of a particular node over time. But what I'm going to do first, I think we may have mentioned this in class, but we, I don't think I got you to do this previously, is I'm going to create a sensor on this part, just a, a point in space on this part that I can use to track the motion over time. Okay, so to do that, what I'm going to do is just create a little bit of geometry here. I'm going to create, under reference geometry, I'm just going to create a point on the end face of this part here. So I'll create a point on the center of that face, like so. So that's just a, a little piece of geometry on its own. It doesn't actually do anything. But what we can do is we can use that point to create a, a sensor, which is a, a point in space that we can track in the simulation. So I'll right click on that and go add sensor. And we're going to add a sensor for simulation data. Okay. Now you can have specific strengths sensors if you want to track stress or displacement or velocity or whatever you want. I'm going to use a type called a workflow sensitive sensor. So it's kind of context sensitive depending on the type of analysis and the type of results you're looking at. It's uh, it's more flexible. Okay. Um, and here in this blue box I'll just select that point that I previously created. So. We have a sensor now here, a workflow sensitive sensor, linked to that point in space. I mean, you, you could use some pre-existing geometry like a vertex or something like that, but uh, let's say there may be cases where you want to know what the specific response of a system is at a, at a very particular point. So that's just a, an example, really, I suppose, a demonstration that we can create some geometry and then track that geometry later. Okay, so... Um, this is optional, I suppose this sensor is optional, but it, it will be useful when it comes to plotting out our response graphs. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to create a new study. And the type of study that, that I'm doing now, we've previously done static studies and frequency analyses. The type of study I'm going to do today here is a linear dynamic study. <clears throat> we've looked in the past at, at the harmonic uh, kind of forced vibration response of the system. What I'm doing today here is the modal time history. Um, linear dynamic study. Okay. So what, what it's going to do is we're going to define a certain range of time that it's going to measure the response of the system in a number of time increments. So to set that up first of all, what I'll do is right click on the, the study name here at the top. Right click on that and I'll go to the study properties. So then here we'll see it's going to look at the first 15 natural frequencies of the system. Um, but what I want to take note of here is under the dynamic options, we're going to look at the time range. It's going to simulate the response of the system over a range of time starting at zero seconds and ending at whatever is here in a number of time steps. So I'm going to set that to two seconds and I'm going to leave the time increment at 0 0.01 seconds. So that's about 100 increments per second, so I should wind up with 200 increments in total. 
So the simulation might take a little while to run, depending on how many time steps you have. And that'll be a combination of the time increment and the total time of the study. So in this case, two seconds, 100 increments per second should give me 200 steps. Um, so that will affect the resolution of your results, but it'll also affect how long it takes to run the actual study itself. Okay, so that's the study set up. We have a part, it's got a material assigned to it, so in this case stainless steel. I can uh, create a mesh, and I'm just going to go with the default parameters for the mesh. So it's a blended curvature based mesh with 2.5 millimeter edge length on the uh, elements. Okay, so something like this here. And uh, in terms of fixtures, we're looking at the free response of the system, and we'll be tracking the displacement of the system here at the end. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fixed geometry fixture at the end here. Okay, so if I was particularly interested maybe in the stresses at this location, the bending stresses, fixed geometry might, mightn't be the most appropriate fixture to use. But if I, all I'm interested in is the displacements over at this end of the ruler, then that's perfectly fine. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a load. I'm going to apply a force to the, the free end of the beam, free end of the ruler. And I'll just apply a very small force. So it's, the stiffness of this beam is very, very small. So I'm just going to apply a downwards force to the free end of this ruler here of 2 newtons. And I want to set the direction of that to be vertical. So I could pick an edge here that's running vertically, for example. Uh, Excuse me. Sorry, I want a selected direction here. So I'm applying a force to face one in a selected direction. I could set the direction using an, an edge of my geometry, or I could say, for example, I want that force to be perpendicular to the top plane. Okay, so if I say here perpendicular to the top plane, I want two newtons of force and I want it to go vertically downwards, so I'm reversing the direction here. Okay, so downwards force of two newtons. Now, what I want to do in this particular study is I want to see what happens if we apply two newtons of force to the, the ruler for a short amount of time and then release it and we look at the free vibration response of the system. So here, the next section down in my force, I have the variation with time. Um, so by default it's linear, but I'm going to set that to curve here, and I'm going to define a response, or define a, a forcing function, if you like. So on the x-axis here, I'm going to I can create a table essentially of force values here. The x is related to time, and y is related to the amount of force, um, but it's normalized so that zero would be zero newtons and 1 here would be 100% of the amplitude of the force that I've selected, which is 2 newtons. So what I want to do is to say at 0 seconds we'll have 0 force, and I'm going to ramp that force up slowly. So at, let's say, 0 0.2 seconds, uh, we'll have the full amount of that 2 newtons of force. And what I want to do next is to uh, suddenly, relatively suddenly, remove that force from it. So I'll add another, just double click here and you can add more rows to your table. What I want to say then is shortly after that, so let's say 0 0.205 or 0 0.0.21, 0 .0 let's say, because we're going up in increments of 0 0.01 seconds. So the next time increment later I want that to be back to zero force again and you'll see that represented in the preview up here. I'm going to ramp up the force slowly, remove that force relatively quickly and then after the full two seconds we still have zero force. So this is going to be our force will be applied, ramped up to two newtons, removed suddenly and zero force applied for the remainder of the study. So what should happen then this end of the beam will be forced downwards by a certain distance, and then it'll move back upwards uh, and oscillate in free vibration. Okay, so that's the force defined. And we're, again, just to reiterate, 
it's here under the variation with time we can define a forcing function here okay and you can set up a table of values to how you want that force to be applied over time okay so i think we're almost there now we have set up the study properties we have a material we have a fixed geometry fixture we have a time varying force we have a mesh the last thing we need then is a um, damping coefficient zeta um, damping ratio zeta rather so at the moment there's zero damping in it we want to define damping ratio it's kind of hard to see it here usually with the default so i'll just widen that out a little bit here but the damping ratio here will be um, let's say 0 0.05 for steel something like that okay and that i think is everything set up all uh, more or less ready to run one thing i will point out though is in the results options here because i've defined that um workflow sensitive sensor earlier on i just want to check the results options here just to see whether that is enabled or not so we're going to save results for all solution steps that's fine uh displacements that's okay uh, this is this is one thing that might speed up the study a little bit um when it's working out the stresses by default it'll work out all stress components so tau xy tau yx uh, all the stresses normal stresses all the shear stresses the sim simulation should run a little bit study uh, the simulation study should run a little bit quicker if i reduce that to just calculate the von Mises stress only and then what i wanted to change here the location for graphs at the moment it's set to none if i set that to uh, workflow sensitive to or to all tracked sensors it'll allow me to plot my graphs for that sensor that i set up earlier so set that to all tracked data sensors okay and that should be ready to run the study um, make sure you save your your study first of all in case anything goes wrong and then and also to save it into a, a subfolder somewhere because the results files can be quite large for this uh, so i'm going to run the study it'll take a while to run so i might pause the video in between Okay, so it took about two and a half, three minutes to run through that study. Um, the next thing it'll do is it'll run through those 200 steps again, this time calculating the, the stress stresses uh, for each step. You see the stress calculations go a fair bit quicker than the, the initial deflection calculations or deformation calculations. Okay, but essentially it's doing 200 separate simulations so it can take a bit of time it can take a fair bit of processing power and ram to run this uh, it should be nearly there so the stress calculations are a bit quicker than the and uh, the full simulation okay so that simulation is finished running there now we have two sets of results we have displacement results and stress results what we're looking at on screen there at the moment is the displacement of the system at plot step number 200 so at, at two seconds um, and we've got a displacement of about 37 microns so quite small on its own that doesn't tell us much information what we want to do really is we want to plot out all of the results so i'm looking here at the, the various plot steps we want to plot out all of those results those 200 uh, steps versus time so we can do that here under the results section if you right click on that here we can define a particular stress plot or displacement plot at a, at a particular plot step or here under define response graph i can draw a graph of um i can record a graph of or plot out a graph of either stress or displacement or velocity or acceleration versus time on the x-axis. So that'll be my 200 plot steps on the x-axis. So in this case, I want to plot a graph of displacement versus time for those 200 steps. Now, I could pick the displacement at any given node on here, but because I've set up a predefined location, that point two, 
here, which uh, corresponds to node number 8903. I can just select that from the predefined location. So that's my workflow sensitive sensor here. Now if I click OK on that, Again. So if I pick displacement for the full range of time at point two, there we go. so we get this kind of a graph here. So we have a graph of displacement on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis, our full two seconds here, or our 200 plot steps. And you can see that the initially that ramp up of force caused the tip of the ruler to displace by about 25 millimeters. Once that force was released, then the ruler starts oscillating in free vibration. And the, the natural frequency, or the first natural frequency of the system is about 13 hertz. So it's actually oscillating at, up and down at 13 hertz, while also slowly coming back down, the displacement is slowly coming back down to zero. Um, so that's the response graph. Um, you can take a screenshot of that or you could save an image of it up here But what you can also do it might be worth noting is you can plot those points in a comma separated value um, Table which you can open up with Excel and plot, you know manipulate the data or, or do some calculations based on that in Excel. Or you can save that as a, an image file directly Okay, so that's um, that's the modal time history analysis completed and um, there are some other results and things that you can get out from that but that response graph is probably the main thing that you want so i'll stop the video at that and uh, thanks for watching